Hi friends, we got another brush video for you. A huge thank you to Sonia G and Beautylish for sending me the Summer Koi Limited Edition brush set for 2024. I couldn't be more grateful to receive this brush set. If you are watching one of my videos for the first time, hi. I love Sonia G brushes and please feel free to peruse my video library where I have plenty of Sonia G videos breaking down the several brushes, demos, everything. Thing. Today will be no different. We will go through each and every brush as well as the details and why don't I start there. This brush set exclusively available on beautylush.com. Because it is a limited edition set, it is sold only as a set. We don't have any individuals at this time and the price for the brush set retails for $210. If you are shocked by that price but it is the first time you are seeing Japanese made brushes, encountering them, Fude is brush in Japanese and there is is a different level of caliber when it comes to Japanese made brushes or anything that's handmade for that matter. The higher level of craftsmanship, the artisanal qualities, the attention to detail, the materials themselves involved in creating these tools warrant a higher price tag. Just to put it out there and not to say that you have to spend money, that amount of money on brushes, but a large part of my audience are Fude collectors. We love our Japanese made brushes especially ones made by Sonia. And this set is just exquisitely beautiful. It is the Summer Koi set. And you can see briefly here on the B-roll where first and foremost, I highly recommend that you check out Sonia's blog on her website, sweetmakeuptemptations.com where she goes into great detail about this set because I become rather long-winded when it comes to Sonia G's and therefore just wanted to get into the individual brush demos. But to quickly break down the design details, you have the curved hand handle here, very much reminiscent of the Kakishibu set and the Tradition set, that first release, the Select Limited set back in 2022, with the blue gradient paint that you probably recognize from her Sky series, both face and eye. But here we have the Makie technique presenting the Koi fish design as well as the Lotus flower, which I think beautifully designed here on the handles and just the sheer amount of precision and detail that goes into fitting these two illustrations on a small handle. And the way it's painted over the blue portion, I think absolutely gorgeous. And you have Sonia G here on the back, beautifully designed, feels lightweight but luxurious at the same time. And you also have probably noticed that the bristles are dyed Psycho bristles with the Kakashibu dye, which is persimmon dye. And the process itself quite a laborious task as well as a long task in that you have to wait for the dye to dry. And again, Sonia goes into detail behind the process with Kakashibu dye, but I love the combination of the blue gradient, the koi and lotus flower designs paired with the Kakashibu dyed bristles because I absolutely adore her Kakashibu set that she released last year. These are phenomenal brushes. And if you want a full on review of this set, you can head over to that video link up above or down below in the description box. I also have the select collection from 2022 and the one I think from last year, it kind of paired with the Kakashibu set if you were wondering about those comparisons. But allow me to get started with these demos, shall we? And of course I had to go into Mother's Midnight Sun because I haven't used a mothership in a while. And I guess in anticipation of what we we should be seeing soon based on the timeline where motherships usually release throughout the year. Maybe late July, early August, we shall find out soon. All these designs are new to Sonia's collection and you can argue that the individual brushes themselves are different because they're each handmade. There will always be a slight, just a slight difference between each one, but let's start with the flat pencil brush, which beautifully unique despite how many flat pencil brushes Sonia has in her collection. This is unique in that the bristles are longer than usual compared to her smudger brushes and her other smaller detail brushes. I have a few here to share just quickly. And the first one that came to mind was the flat definer brush. Again, this is the Summer Koi flat pencil. And here we have the flat definer. You can see from the side that the flat pencil is 
thicker at the base, whereas the flat definer thinner, and that is recognizable from the fact that the ferrule is more pinched on the flat definer versus the flat pencil. So you have nice density here at the base, but beautiful flexibility along the tip, which makes it hugely versatile and maybe a tad bit more versatile than the flat definer, which I absolutely love okay you might find that you get a little more pickup from this brush again because of the thicker base but you have great flexibility if you wanted to take shadow here like i am on my second eye with extreme dusk because i love to place eyeshadow along my lash for a little bit of definition and some smoke and i was able to do so with ease as well as get a little smoky wing off the edge and i also use this brush i think to place jubilee on my inner corner and i like the bristle of this brush because I recently taken a liking to placing color in a more robust fashion on the inner corner, not just on the far inner corner that you can do for highlighting and you most certainly can use the flat pencil for. I just like a higher arc of highlight or even just a, a more vibrant color like I have been doing my Prada shadows along the inner arc of my eye. And again, you can have more precision along the lash line, both top and bottom. You could even do more of a spotlight placement placement effect on the mobile lid if you didn't want to totally envelop the lid with eyeshadow but just kind of put a little bit of twinkle there and I can demonstrate that quickly with the flat pencil take a little bit of our beloved astral solstice and just tap it here on the very center okay okay beautifully soft and it has nice girth to it it's not so soft that it's flimsy and too flexible that you don't feel feedback while applying your eyeshadow i think it is an incredible brush for its size and the fact that you can even use this to tap color on the outer corner which sonia wrote on her blog as well that was a noteworthy benefit i think to mention for the flat pencil because when it comes to outer corner smoke sometimes having a small brush just to start build that intensity up slowly from your lash line lends the user better control in creating that smoky effect without it giving raccoon eyes and the flat pencil i think allows for that to happen you can build the color up slowly and then use the other brushes in the collection to finish the look next up we have the small builder the builder series in sonia's collection just untouchable and if you haven't used one of sonia's builders the pickup power for several of her builders i mean I mean, classic builder here, builder three from her original fundamental set, which is no longer available. But I also wanted to show the builder M from her new revamped foundations collection. You also have the T2 from the original Kakashibu set. But what makes the small builder unique is that it is smaller. And I think that has an advantage or or those smaller eyes have an advantage with this brush because now you could be a little more precise with how you place color on your lid. And I use this brush. I I believe to place the skin show shade on the center of my lid as well as to place some color on the outer corner i'm not sure if it was the small builder or the small pencil but either of these brushes depending on can serve a similar purpose and you might be wondering well how come she just didn't go with a, an entirely different size i think all the brushes that we have from sonia definitely going in with a smaller builder type brush is a way to go because a lot of her builders here and you could argue sure it compares to her builder pro but builder pro here is still bigger right it's still bigger i can hide this brush behind a uh, builder pro you won't be able to see it and you have the slightly more tapered cut here on builder pro whereas on the small builder it has more of a round edge so there is a place i think in one's collection and just one's eye routine for the small builder and i love how it's small but it's not short so you can use this brush not only to place color on the lid or even on the inner corner as i did here with blitz violet orchid but then you can continue taking that color through the crease just to smooth out that application and of course obviously you can place color here precisely on the lower lash line if you needed the color to stay tighter to your lash line and not appear as blown out tapping on specialized shades and any of those finicky textures that we all have in our collection for our eyeshadows that are flakier they're drier the builder brushes from sonia's collection are 
they're the one when it comes to choosing the right tool for those tougher to pick up textures the ones that are more hard pan and you got to go back and forth the brush has enough stiffness but also still soft when applying shadow on the eyes and blending it out after but that initial pickup that wiggle wiggle the builder does beautifully the crease booster and i'm sure you realize that it compares to the classic mini booster that we have here from her original sky eye set now this is slightly different it is a little bigger okay it has a similar dome shape at the tip but what you get from crease booster that you don't necessarily get from mini booster is a little more of a a wider parameter of blend right if you need it a little bit more from mini booster because mini booster feels more direct in the crease and this was the go-to brush for smaller hooded eyes where they needed that smooth blend through the crease but they needed the brush small enough to fit through that crease fold but still soft enough to diffuse the shadow crease booster is going to give you a little more of a diffuse blend because it just covers a wider surface area and again it has a little more splay in that respect and the taper allows for great color application here on the lower lash line as I did with Vermilion Venom because I love a hazy lower lash line that is just my preferred technique when it comes to placing eyeshadows there you most certainly could have used small builder or flat pencil again as I mentioned before to get a more precise serving of color under the lash line Ooh, but crease booster is it's great because I like a smaller brush compared to, let's say, the T4 from the Kakishibu set, right? If I were to compare this with the Summer Koi brush, this is smaller domed, right? So it's going to cover up more surface area through the crease, but the crease booster is incredibly mobile and nice to still get precise coloring in the crease, but also to acquire that diffused effect on shadow because it's small enough to get precise in terms of the color application, but it has movement to get the color swirling and twirling in a way that is not gonna be so blown out like you would get from a, a larger crease brush, but it still has a little bit of that blown out diffused outcome because of how the brush is designed not too many bristles but it's not too lightweight either also you probably thought of and Sonia brought this up on her blog as well from the Lotus collection the soft definer crease booster is bigger than soft definer naturally but it's gonna have more of a color placement and also great diffusing through the crease and I think smaller eyes can still take advantage of this brush size you might have to rely on either well we'll get to the i believe is called one second please the smooth blender you could probably use a smooth blender to place color on your crease but if you have a smaller hooded eye you might want to rely on crease booster to get that color right into the fold and then take it through incredibly soft but not so soft that you can't feel the color where it needs to go I think again it just moves beautifully across the skin but what you get with precision you also get a little bit of that blurred effect which we love and finally the brush that I was was excited to try in person the smooth blender this is the first shorter domed brush we have from Sonia because we have a lot of these round brush types from Sonia's collections just to name a few from her original selects we have the s3 which is all white Canadian squirrel then we have the ts3 which is a mixture of Canadian white Canadian with psycho goat and my beloved t3 from the Kakishibu set one of my most favorite brushes from the entire Entire set and now we have the smooth blender okay smooth blender is incredibly unique and here's the thing because it is shorter it's not going to have the same fluidity as these brushes right I think what makes these brushes fantastic is that they can serve as your place down color brush as well as your let's get this blending going brush right they they serve several purposes at once the smooth blender is going to give you blend through the crease but you have to make sure and as I demonstrated with taboo both taboo and extreme dusk from midnight sun to take the pressure away from the brush you have to think about skimming the skin your eyes with this brush if you you go in with too much pressure it's going to move the skin naturally because it doesn't have the same movement quality as the other brushes here 
right? But what it doesn't have in that flexibility, it makes up, yes, say it with me now, pickup. It's going to have incredible pickup and that's what I did when placing Extreme Dusk on the outer lid to create that smoke. Whoa, ho, ho. talk about even application of color and also keeping it precise through the crease. Although we got a little bit of diffusing, right? And I did rely on crease booster to just refine the edges of that application, but Smooth Blender was a joy to use. And unlike any brush I've used from Sonia's collection, of course, Jumbo Blender comes into mind and that brush is unique because it has the flat size and then you could turn it on to the tip and just use the tip to blend the color through your crease. But Smooth Blender has a round ferrule and you can take the entire surface area of the brush on your eyes. And I thought, why not? Let's experiment with the metallic and I went in with bronze eclipse, which is more of like that melted metallic formula from mother's portfolio It picked up that it was laughable picked up the shadow no problem But the way it glided over my lid I didn't place the brush on its side I just whipped this brush around on my lid and the eyeshadow application was even there were no skips on the lid It's all it was like I used a flat brush to apply this shadow. And you could also use this brush to place color under the lash line, even that inner arc color, because if you want a hardier serving of shadow here on the inner corner, you most certainly can use the Smooth Blender for that purpose. And you could also use this to refine the edges of any shadow you, you placed prior. I would still rely on Crease Booster for that purpose, but Smooth Blender was a lot of fun because now you could tap color here heavily on the outer lid, but keep it tight and precise with the crease because of the round shape and it doesn't flare as much. I think that's a great change in terms of just playing with different techniques and not everything having to be super blown out, right, from your crease point. You could keep it tight but have really nice serving of color at the same time or also use this brush to just place color all over the lid. And I'm thinking if you're a minimalist when it comes to eyeshadow, just taking those one and done shades and using Smooth Blender to take color across the lid and take whatever's left over through your crease and down the lower lash line, you're done. You're absolutely finished. And this kind of reminds me of Pencil L from the Fundamental set, but you see how Smooth Blender is still a little bigger, which makes it unique. And I think a great escape from my types of favorite one and done brushes, for instance, the T5 from the Kakashibu set. T5, you obviously can place color here on one side, right? And then take it through the crease. So this is gonna have a lot more fluidity along the eyes and just because, again, the bristles are longer, are more flexible, and will just feel like they're moving more than the little smooth blender. But if you want to keep the color a little, a little more conservative in terms of the, the placement and keeping the color tighter through the crease, Smooth Blender is fantastic. I think it's a lot of fun in using that brush and just a different experience, a sensorial one from my other Sonia brushes. And that is the entire Summer Koi set for 2024, the Maquillé Summer Koi set. Again, I just wanted to express my thanks and gratitude for receiving this set complimentary. And if you already have a lot of Sonia brushes, if you have all the ones that I show to compare with the Summer Koi series, you don't necessarily need need this set to achieve what I did for this eye look. You very much well can achieve beautiful eye looks if you already have Sonia G brushes. I think this is a matter of you collecting her brushes. If you're just head over heels for this design, for the blue color, for the koi and the lotus design on the handles, for the shapes, right? Maybe your eye shape is, is all of our eye shapes are unique to us, yes, duh. But you found that these shapes in particular were the ones that you were waiting for, that you held off on a lot of her limited releases and you were like, this is the one, then go for it. If you find that your collection's pretty set and you're on a budget and you don't wanna quite pull the trigger yet, then wait a bit. Yes, it is a limited set. And I know that places FOMO in our hearts because if it goes, it might be gone forever. If we didn't get the Summer Koi collection, I get it. This, listen, these types of conversations run through my mind all the time with other items that are limited and I don't know if they're coming back, but it's just one of those things. In the end, it is a brush that is just breathtaking 
100%. And again, if you have the budget and you collect Sony G brushes and you have all of her limited releases since she's been creating them and this is just a no-brainer, then who am I to tell you to not or, her or to buy it? But I just wanted to show these brushes in action if you were thinking about purchasing it and seeing how they operate. But look, Sony G brushes all operate with clear intention because Sonia herself has just immaculate intention when it comes to designing brushes. With all the brushes that she has created and all the brushes that she owns, it's still remarkable to me that Sonia manages to create unique shapes despite everything that she has been exposed to and used. I think that's what makes it so special and exciting for the user because we're on that journey with her and to experience what she had laid out in her mind. And, and when you read the background in gaining perspective from, from her point of view, why she created said brush with said bristles and the density and the brush length, it all makes sense. It all makes sense when you put these tools into action, when you use them with specified formulas that she outlines on her blog, recommending that you use this type of brush with this type of texture. And when you do and experience firsthand what she's talking about, you're like, okay, I see what's happening, Sonia. Thank you so much for your recommendations because they never fail. Let me know, family, if you picked up the Summer Koi Maquillate set, if you're skipping, if you love it, but you're just holding off because groceries, I would love to hear it down below. I'll see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Monthly faves coming up. It is July 1st, so I guess that video is coming up next. Take care and I will see you again soon.